Imagine this to be a certain line. And we know its angle here is 36.89 and this angle is also 36.8699. Can I find the equation of that line, the general equation of that line? That is the reflected line from the parabola. Okay? So the general equation of that line is y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. We know that the point that it's hitting here is 4, 4, right? y1 and x1 are both 4. So y minus 4 is equal to, how do I get the slope? Well, it's a positive slope, and so it's just tangent of 36.8699. Tangent of 36.8699 x minus 4, okay? That's the general equation of the reflected line. Now, let me show that when x equals 0, we want this line to go through that point. We, we don't want it to go above or below. So when x equals 0 here, what's y equal to? So set x equal to 0, you get y is equal to 4, and then uh, the 4 goes over here, and then minus 4, Tangent of 36.8699. So here is the moment of truth. Okay? So take that tangent of that angle. And I got three quarters. Three quarters times four. <clears throat> it's gonna be uh, one. So y equals four minus four times three quarters. And four four cancel one. Perfect. So a straight vertical line coming down, hitting the point 44, goes through the focal point. Now why is that good? Well, if we could also show that every single line goes through the focal point, okay? Any line goes through the focal point, okay? Then that means the star forms a very sharp image over there. And then we can put another secondary mirror there, reflect it for, to somewhere else, or we could put our computer instrumentation there, have a good picture of the sky. So uh, whatever we want, we can utilize that uh, focal point. So let's do this process now for a general point. Okay? Okay. Then we took the, uh, we know that y1 is equal to, um, a quarter x1 squared. Then we took the derivative of that. y prime is equal to half x1. Then we took the uh, uh, perpendicular line to that, right? This was the slope of that. We took the perpendicular, so uh, it was going to be, this is the slope, so what slope times half x1 is equal to negative 1, right? The product of the two lines. So you have m is equal to negative 2 over x1, okay? Then we took the tangent inverse of that. Theta is equal to tan inverse of negative 2 over x1. And that gave us the negative 26.65, right? And then we subtracted that from 90 to get this angle, right? To the 63. So this is naturally going to give you a negative answer. You could either take the absolute value of this and subtract it from 90, or you could add this to 90. Either way, you're going to get the 63. So this is going to give you negative 10 inverse of 2 over x1. Now I'm going to add this to pi over 2. Okay. So theta plus pi over 2. And that's going to give us what? This angle, right? The 63. Then what we argued is that this 63 and this 63 are the same, right? Then we subtracted this guy, the 26.56, from the 63 to get this little piece, right? So uh, this one or the 63 is already this thing. So then we have to, uh, from this, we have to subtract the 26. The 26 is this thing. Um, 
the 26 is this thing, but it's the absolute value of that thing, right? So imagine this is 63 right now, and then this is uh, negative 26. Uh, we, we basically have to add them, or you can say take the absolute value of this and subtract it from this, because we want to get the 36.8699. So basically, since this is going to give us negative anyway, I could add them again. And when you add them, it's like subtracting the absolute value. So uh, let's see here. Erase some stuff. <coughs> So now we're adding these two. Uh, you have 10 inverse of 2 over x1, negative 10 inverse of 2 over x1, plus pi over 2. And then add this to there, so you're going to have negative 10 inverse of 2 over x1. So that means you're going to have pi over 2 minus 2 tangent inverse of 2 over x1. And then what did we do? Then we took the tangent of that angle. Let's call this angle beta. So that was like our, uh, that was like our angle 37 uh, degrees, right? The one that we ended up with, the final angle. So then we're going to take the tangent of that. And then the final uh, step was y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. So y1 is equal to a quarter x1 squared. The slope is the tangent of the beta, which is this thing, tangent of pi over 2 minus 2 10 inverse 2 over x1. And then x minus x1, so, so we're going to have x minus x1. Then what we're eventually going to do is set x equal to 0. When x equals to 0, what should y be? 1. Okay. Well, there's a little bit of trick that we've got to do here because we've got to clean this up. So let's use the, some trig identities. Because this is a little harder because we're doing it with any point, x1, y1. So we have tangent of uh, tangent of alpha minus uh, gamma. Uh, we have the difference of two angles here, right? So it's going to be a tangent of alpha minus tangent of gamma over 1 plus tangent alpha tangent gamma. So this is the tangent of the sum of uh, two, uh, the difference of two angles. Okay, so we've got to take tangent of pi over 2 minus uh, tangent of 2 times tan inverse of 2 over x1. Let's write this bigger. Divided by 1 plus tangent of pi over 2 times tangent of, again, gamma, which is 2 tan inverse of 2 over x1. <clears throat> what happens? Well, if you know from trig tangent pi over 2, it's a number that is approaching infinity. It's a huge, huge number, right? So we can say the limit of this function, because this is so big, it likes, it's like this, this this thing disappears next to this. This is a huge number. The one also disappears because this is almost infinity. So you get rid of the one. So what's the limit of this function? Uh, because tangent of pi over 2 is infinite. Well, you have tangent of pi over 2 and tangent of pi over 2. It cancels itself out. 
So I'm left with what? Uh, this thing disappeared. This thing canceled out with this. So I'm left with one over tangent of this. So basically this whole thing reduced to one divided by tangent of twice the tan inverse of two over x1. Now I have to use the uh, double angle formula. 